CSS Alabama was built in secrecy in 1862 by British shipbuilders John Laird's Sons and Company in northwest England at their shipyard in Birkenhead, Wirral, England. Under British neutrality law, it was possible to build a ship designed as an armed vessel provided that it wasn't armed until after it sailed into international waters. In light of this loophole, CSS Alabama was built with reinforced decks for cannon emplacements, but the builders stopped short of fitting her with armaments or any warlike equipment. Initially known as Hull No. 290 to hide her identity, the ship was launched as Enrica on May 15, 1862 and secretly slipped out of Birkenhead, England on July 29, 1862. Union Captain Tunis A. M. Craven, commander of USS Tuscarora, was in Southampton and was tasked with intercepting the new ship, but was unsuccessful. Captain Seams arrived at Terciera Island on August 20th, 1862 and began overseeing the refitting of the new vessel with various provisions, including armament, and 350 tons of coal. After three days, the Enrica was equipped as a naval cruiser and designated a commerce raider for the Confederate States of America. The ship was purposely commissioned about a mile off Tercieta Island in international waters on August 24, 1862. Captain Raphael Seams mounted a gun carriage and read his commission from Confederate States of America President Jefferson Davis, authorizing him to take command of the new cruiser. With that, the cruiser became Confederate States Steamer Alabama. Under Captain Seams, CSS Alabama spent her first two months in the eastern Atlantic, ranging southwest of the Azores and then redoubling east, capturing and burning northern merchant ships. After a difficult Atlantic crossing, she then continued her path of destruction and devastation in the greater New England region. She then sailed south, arriving in the West Indies, where she raised more havoc before finally cruising west into the Gulf of Mexico. There, in January 1863, CSS Alabama had her first military engagement. She came upon and quickly sank the Union sidewheeler USS Hatares, just off the Texas coast near Galveston. She then continued further south, eventually crossing the equator, where she took the most prizes of her raiding career while cruising off the coast of Brazil. After a second easternly Atlantic crossing, CSS Alabama sailed down the southwestern African coast, where she continued her war against northern commerce. After stopping in Saldana Bay, South African Republic, on July 29, 1863, in order to verify that no enemy ships were in Table Bay, she finally made a much-needed refitting and reprovisioning visit to Cape Town, South Africa Republic. She then sailed for the East Indies, where she spent six months destroying seven more ships before finally redoubling the Cape of Good Hope en route to France. Upon the completion of her seventh expeditionary raids, CSS Alabama had been at sea for 534 days out of 657 never visiting a single Confederate port. She boarded nearly 450 vessels, captured or burned 65 Union merchant ships, and took more than 2,000 prisoners. On June 11, 1864, CSS Alabama arrived in Port Cherbourg, France, the American sloop of war USS Kearsarge, under the command of Captain John Ancrum Winslow, arrived three days later and took up station just outside the harbor. USS Kearsarge now had Alabama boxed in with no place left to run. Having no desire to see his worn out ship rot away at a French dock while quarantined by Union warships, and given his instinctive aggressiveness, Captain Seams chose to fight. After preparing his ship and drilling the crew for the coming battle during the next several days, Captain Seams issued through diplomatic channels a bold challenge to the Kearsarge's commander. My intention is to fight the Kearsarge as soon as I can make the necessary arrangements. I hope these will not detain me more than until tomorrow or the morrow morning at furthest. I beg she will not depart until I am ready to go out. I have the honor to be your obedient servant, R. Seams Captain. On June 19th, CSS Alabama sailed out to meet the Union cruiser. As USS Kearsarge turned to meet her opponent, CSS Alabama opened fire. USS Kearsarge waited patiently until the range had closed to less than 1,000 yards. The battle quickly turned against the Alabama due to the superior gunnery displays by USS Kearsarge. CSS Alabama's too rapid rate of fire resulted in frequent poor gunnery, with many of her shots going too high, and as a result, 
USS Kearsarge benefited little that day from the protection of her outboard chain armor. Captain Seams later said that the armor on the Kearsarge was unknown to him at the time of his decision to issue the challenge to fight. And in the years that followed, Seems steadfastly claimed he would never have fought Kearsarge if he had known she was armor clad. A little more than an hour after the first shot was fired, CSS Alabama was reduced to a sinking wreck by Kearsarge's powerful 280 millimeter Dahlgrens, forcing Captain Seems to strike his colors and to send one of his two surviving boats to Kearsarge to ask for assistance. As CSS Alabama sank, the injured Captain Seams threw his sword into the sea, depriving USS Kearsarge's commander, Captain, S Captain Winslow, of the traditional surrender ceremony of having it handed over to him as victor. USS Kearsarge rescued the majority of the survivors, but 41 of Alabama's officers and crew, including Captain Seams, were rescued by John Lancaster's private British steam yacht, Deerhound, while USS Kearsarge stood off to recover her rescued boats as the Alabama sank. Captain Winslow was forced to stand by helplessly and watch the Deerhound bear it away to England, his much sought after adversary, Captain Seams, and his surviving shipmates.